welcome to my Monday mashup. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from the UK. Um, my Monday mashups are where we um, mix up lots of different stamps to make different things and um, sometimes um, it's nice to see how they can coordinate together and how um, projects can come together through um, just mixing up a few bits and pieces that we may have that are sort of in our stash. So um, this is the um, card we're making today. So we're going a bit vintage today. Um, the actual stamp set that we've used here um, is called Comfort and Hope. Now Comfort and Hope um, is a stamp set that I've had in my um, armoury for a while shall we say um, but I haven't actually used it a great deal and I don't know why because it's got some really brilliant sort of background sort of pieces so it's one that can really um, be used with lots and lots of different stamps so um, yeah we're going to put that right today so that's our first one we're going to be using. Um, I pulled out Forever Fern just because I wanted some little dots. So this is these little dots here that I'm using. Um, but I, I suspect that you may have other stamp sets that have some little dots or little background um, speckles in. Um, alternatively, you could use like a flicking of your pen to add those sort of things. But um, I'm using those today. And then finally, our third one we're going to be using is uh, Very Versailles. And this is the script that we're using from here. This is really versatile. Again, it's really great for doing backgrounds and things like that. So if I bring you back to my card, you can see, um, as I say, we've gone vintage today. So we're using very vanilla cardstock because it really loans itself to um, more of a vintage feel. And... Um, I don't know if you can see in, in the background this mottled pinky sort of background that we've got here. I'm going to show you how to create that. So that's our first step. Um, it's a little bit of fun. It is a little bit messy, um, but it's easy to clear up very quick. So hopefully you'll, you'll give it a go and uh, enjoy it. So if I can, um, I'll put my card to one side. I, I will move it out the way in a moment because we're going to get a little bit messy. So um, I don't want to get anything else on it. Um, but we're going to be starting off with Rococo Rose. So I've got a piece of very vanilla here. Now this measures 13.35 um, centimetres by 9 centimetres across. So this is our um, vintage layer. And then um, I've got another layer which is 13.85 by 9.5 and, and that is just going to give us our border on there. Okay, so I'm going to take the small one. Um, I notice I've got a little speckle on here already, but I'm not worried about that because we're going vintage. So um, I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to move this out of the way for now. I will bring it in as we progress just so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add some... Um, Rococo Rose ink to a shiny surface. Now, I use a glass mat, so I'm going to use it directly onto my mat. If you haven't got that, you can do it either onto um, a piece of acetate or you could do it onto um, a poly bag if you have a poly bag, um, or the uh, oven liners are really good for this as well. So, I'm just going to just wipe down some ink onto my desk here. If you have got the reinkers of any of the colours, you could use that instead of your ink pads. Um, Rococo Rose, unfortunately, I haven't got a reinker for at the moment, so um, I can't do that. So that's why I'm using the pad. Now, what I want to do is I'm just going to smear this around my desk. You have to bear with us on this because it does uh, seem a really strange technique. And then I'm just going to go in and just dab off just some of that colour again, just to bring a little bit more colour into it really. And it doesn't matter that it's patchy. All I want to make sure is that it is roughly the size of my card. I don't worry if it's a little bit bigger. Um, don't worry if it's a tiny bit smaller, but you don't want it too small. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in um, this. Now this is... Um, isopropyl alcohol. Now this is um, otherwise known sometimes as rubbing alcohol that's used for medicinal purposes but it's great to have in um, any crafter's stash because it's really good for cleaning up all those gluey messes you know if you sometimes get glue on your scissors and things like that. So I'm using this today. Um, normal alcohol will work so something like vodka or gin or something a, a white liquid would work um, but what you do want to make sure is that um, you're not wasting your good stuff really. So I'm just going to open my bottle here um, and I've just got a little dropper 
here. So I'm just going to pick up some of the alcohol. I'll pop it out of the way so I don't spill it. And now I'm just going to drop my alcohol onto my um, inked surface here. So I'm not doing it in any particular order. I'm just literally just dropping it. So I'm giving it a little squeeze as I drop. And you can see what's happening. The ink is repelling and it's starting to um, sort of spread it around a little bit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, whilst that is really moist, I'm just going to drop my piece of card into it. Now I'm going to leave it just for a few seconds just to try and make sure it soaks up that alcohol um, and then I'm very carefully going to just lift it up from the edge. So there you can see that gives you a really unusual sort of mottled sort of background. Now you can do this with lots of colours, you can do it with one colour. If you're using lots of colours you need to sort of make sure that they don't sort of become like mucky because they can sometimes become that mucky sort of brown colour. Um, but if you um, want to add different colours, what I tend to do is I would do, say, the pink first, and then I would add another colour on top afterwards by using the same technique. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is obviously just to clear my mat. That is the messy bit really over and done with. So that's uh, the rest is sponging and stuff like that, so it's not too bad. Okay, so now that's done. What I would do um, is I would leave this to completely evaporate. You can see it's still a bit yellowy here. That's just where it's still wet. Um, I'm just quickly going to give it a blast with my um, heat gun just to uh, make sure that's all evaporated through. Okay, so now that's all evaporated into the, the card itself, I can work on this quite um, quite easily. And the reason I wanted it dry is because if you try and um, ink, which we're going to do next, then you'll find that it will uh, bleed with the alcohol. So that's why you just wanted to make sure that's nice and dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to next take a soft suede and a sponge. And all I'm going to do now is to ink the edges of my card so I'm just inking around making sure I get a nice dark sort of border on this you could use um, early espresso if you wanted to but early espresso can sometimes be a bit too dark and uh, we're going to be using that on some of the leaves and, and stuff um, in a second but um, it's just a little bit too dark I think for, for this sort of purpose we want to make this look old and vintagey if you're using a glass mat or something else to ink on you can actually pick the ink up off your um, mat as well okay so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to pick up some more of this ink and I want to just go over lightly on my middle just to take that stark whiteness away but I don't want it too um, too uh, taken away if that makes sense so I'm just going to add a bit more just to my corners okay so that's my first part I'm just going to bring in just pick up some of that I'm not too worried because it's going to uh, all be together anyway so I'm next going to take that um a script stamp that I said from the um, very first eye. Now, um, when I did this, I initially stamped it with the soft suede, but it didn't stand out quite enough. So I'm going to switch over to um, early espresso. So as I say, this is a little bit darker. So we're going to be using it for all of our elements actually on here. Um, but we're going to be using it um, first generation, second generation and things like that just to sort of mix it up a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is to ink this stamp here. And we're using this in first generation. So this is going straight on to our piece here. And I'm just going to stamp off to that edge. I'm going to ink it again. And then I'm just going to move it over slightly and just do another one underneath. Now don't worry if they don't sort of match up completely. It's not the end of the world. So don't worry about that. 
Okay, the next one I'm going to take is this um, swirly circle, which looks sort of like thread, which I love. So you can see I've just used it in sort of various areas on the back. So if I leave this here. Now, again, this is first generation, but I also did some second generation. So what I did is I stamped, stamped again, stamped, stamped again. And you're literally just doing this wherever you want to. So it's completely random. So don't feel um, under pressure to sort of put it in any kind of patterned order or anything. I'm then going to take this sort of hash sort of um, cross section type um, stamp, which is sort of, uh, it's got bits missing out of it anyway, which is what, you know, what I quite liked about it. So I'm going to stamp off first of all and stamp on. And then if I feel that I want to do one darker, which I might do here, and I might do one here, and again, one here. So again, it's just building up those different layers, really. I'm then going to take that little dotty one that I um, spoke to you about from the Forever Fern stamp set. And again, now I want these to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to do these all in first generation. And I'm just going to, again, do them randomly over my background. So there we go. So that is all of our stamping done. So I told you it was nice and quick. So next thing I'm going to do quickly is just to clear my desk again. Um, as I say, this is slightly mucky, this um, card because you do need to keep cleaning your work area um, but it's easy clean it's not um, it's not really bad okay so now that we've got that um, I'm going to mount that onto my other piece of very vanilla so this is just slightly larger that gives us that nice border around all the edges so I'm just going to use um, just multi-purpose glue to glue that into place So I'm just sticking that into, into place there. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is to add this little bit of ribbon here. Now this is the um, polka dot ribbon. So this is uh, Whisper White. So it is quite stark against the um, the more mellowed colors of the vintage look so what i did is i just cut myself a piece of the ribbon itself and then i'm quickly going to take my sponge that i used earlier with a little bit of soft suede and i'm just lightly stroking it over the top so i might miss some parts of it um i'm not trying to color it all I'm just literally just trying to take off that stark white so as I say it's just very lightly over the top okay so now I want to tie this into place now this is just tied in a double knot and if you can see it's just sort of just over a third of the way down so I'm going to sort of guess it um, but I can move it once it's done so I'm not too worried if it's not exactly where I want it so I'm going to tie one knot try not to stretch this ribbon too much because it does um, sort of pull really tight if, if you do so just just try not to um, get it to pull too tight okay so that's just a double knot and then I'm just going to trim those ends like so okay and then finally I can just give it a little quick tug just to make it it lay flatter so that's done so now we want to do is our greeting so I'm going to use the uh, comfort and hope stamp from the comfort and home set and I'm going to be stamping it in verse mark onto a piece of Rococo Rose um, cardstock so um, I'm first of all going to um, bring in my Versamark ink pad. I'm then going to 
stamp it and this time i'm heat embossing in white um which again it is it is quite stark but it's not too stark it's not too bad so you can get away with it um in in this project Okay, so I'm just going to heat that up. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut a strip. So um, when I made the original, I didn't really sort of measure its length or anything. So I'm going to do the same again here. I'm just going to chop it with a, a border top and bottom. And then I'm just going to trim the ends. So I'm, I'm not measuring this. Um, but it is about seven and a half centimeters, but I'm not, not too worried about how long it is. Okay, so this is going to stick onto here. Now, as I see, this is, um, if I bring in the original, my ribbon is just a little bit too high. So what I'm gonna do is just wiggle that down a little bit. And then I can see where that's going to stick. So yes, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to take some dimensionals. Um, so this section is going to sit on uh, raised slightly. So if I can just hold this up. Now I'm making sure that it is level with my edge of my vintage piece. And obviously it's straight across and I'm also sticking it slightly over the ribbon so the ribbon is sort of tucked underneath it really okay so you can see it's just tucked under here okay so now that's done we're going to um, stamp these little sort of fern cone almost type shapes they are I'm not sure really what they are but um, they're very pretty um, I have done two already just to save a bit of time so you need to stamp three of these and you're going to stamp two in early espresso and one in soft suede um, i thought it looked better that way uh, i did initially try with all soft suede but it did need that little lift really so this is my early espresso and this is my little pines so I'm just going to stamp this onto a piece of scrap of very vanilla. But what I am then going to do is because I'm going to have an edge on the actual cutout, I'm going to take that stark edge away. So again, I'm just taking my sponge and my soft suede and just going over the top, just dabbing really. And it's just going to take that very vanilla starkness away from the edge of my cones. Okay, so I'm going to cut these out. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how I cut because I do get asked about it quite a lot because I do quite a lot of fussy cutting. But the trick is to keep your scissors still, as still as you can. Obviously, you are closing them as, as you cut. Keep them still, but also hold them at a slight angle. So don't cut like that. You want to cut at a slight angle. Now, what that does, it creates like a very slight camber on the cut so you don't get any sort of um, edges that are raised. So I'm going to keep my scissors virtually still, but I'm actually moving the card. Now, obviously I need to open and close my scissors as I'm going, and I always get rid of any sort of excess pieces. Go in again and just move the card and try and keep those scissors as still as you can. It's a weird sensation because obviously you still need to close your scissors to cut, but you just need to almost wiggle it, I think is the best expression. Wiggle it with your left hand if you're right-handed or vice versa if you are left-handed. So, and again here. Now, when I get to this end piece, obviously this is gonna be a little bit more difficult because I'm not gonna have a great deal 
to hang on to when I come back the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm going to hold the whole piece here and do it this way so that I'm sort of still got something to hold on to really. Okay, and then trim off the bottom there. So that's the three cut out. I, and you can see I've left them very long at the moment because I'm going to tuck them behind um, my little banner here. So I always leave them a little bit longer to start with because then you can trim them if you need to or you can leave them where they are. So I'm just going to pop this one behind. So as you can see, that's popped nicely behind. So I'm going to leave that nice and long because that will give me something to glue to. So I'm just adding some multi-purpose glue and I'm just going to tuck that behind. And then I think like this one, I'm just going to raise this leaf there. So I haven't stuck any glue to the back of these leaves at all because I want them to remain sort of a bit free and a bit sort of uh, up in the air, really. So this is my soft suede one. So I'm going to tuck this underneath here. And again, I think that's absolutely fine with that long end on it. So I'm just going to add some glue. And again, I'm not adding any to the leaves themselves. So this is going to tuck underneath. Okay, and then finally, my other early espresso one, I'm just going to test it. And I, you notice I'm going under the actual uh, ribbon itself there. If you prefer, you could have one on top perhaps we'll do that. So if I'm having one on top, what I'm going to do is snip it off right back to those um, points there. Again, just adding glue to that tip and then very carefully, I'm just going to pop that underneath. So you can just rearrange your ribbon or your little fur cones or whatever they are. So I need to ask what they are. So there we go. So that's um, obviously that part. So finally, the only other thing I need to do is to bring in my card front. Now this is a standard C6 card. So this um, measures 21 centimeters by 14.85 and it's scored at 10 and a half. So that's um, our standard uh, metric cards that we tend to use here in the UK. If you're um, using metric um, then that's absolutely fine you can just adjust the measurements you know accordingly sorry if you use an imperial so there we go I'm just going to glue that into place and then finally um, I added just three of these little elegant um, gems then these are the elegant faceted gems and they are from the prize peony suite so um, but I've been using these on everything. I just think they're so pretty because they're clear rather than a, a jewel. Um, they just add that little bit of sparkle, but without being too um, sort of bright almost. As much as I love um, our gems, these just add that, well, elegant touch, I guess. So I'm just using these clear ones. Whoops. And again, I haven't really sort of considered where I've put them. I've just kind of, it's where it seems to flow to really. So just, um, you know, use your own sort of eye and see where you think you want them to go. And I am just going to trim that ribbon off a little bit more there because I think that end was just a little bit too long. So there is our vintage comfort and hope. Um, I hope you like that today. It's just another little technique you can use for doing pretty backgrounds and things like that. Um, as I say, if you want to do numerous colours, then I would recommend that you um, experiment a little bit first, but probably do your colours at separate times. So do one colour, let it dry. You can use your heat gun to dry it off. Repeat the process in the next colour and do it a little bit like that because um, otherwise, as I say, they can sort of all blend and become a little bit muddy. So there we go. I hope you like that and um, I will see you next week for another Monday mashup. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye.